Give them God's word. Give them the word. The prophet says, the Bible says in Jeremiah 23, verses 28 to 29, the prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word, I want you to see the distinction. There are prophets who have dreams that are not God's word. The prophet who has a dream, let him say his dream. In other words, there are a lot of prophets out there who are sharing their dreams and they are pulling crowds, but those who have his word are silent. Now, when you read this book that we are reading this week, Jeremiah, we've been reading, going through the book of Jeremiah. When you read chapter, chapter 23 and you are reading from verses, uh, verses 1 coming down up to verse 27, first it says in 27 that there are some who say, I have dreamt, I have dreamt, yet I, God, has not spoken. That is the context in which we find this text. Verse 27 says, they say, I have dreamt, I have dreamt, but they are not speaking what I have spoken. But God says, I give permission to them, though, to go and say their dreams. So they say their dreams, and crowds are coming, but there is someone also that has to speak. I want to say to you, when God wants to show off that he is God, he gives the devil a chance to do whatever he wants to do. And in his time, he walks into the situation. And the devil and all his powers and demons are paralyzed. So he says, let those who are pulling crowds with their dreams and not God's word, let them pull them. But stand in 2018 and proclaim not your word, not your dream, but my word. For my word is powerful. The Bible says, let him speak my word faithfully. Allow me to say to you, the Bible is very clear. That it's not those who are, going to, who are preaching who are going to heaven. Forget about that. That is not a ticket to heaven. It's not those who are paying their tithe who are going to heaven. Forget about that. It's not those who are offering who will go to heaven. Forget about that. But the Bible is very clear. Christ, when he separates the goats from the sheep, he says to the sheep, you have been faithful in little things. Your faith should breed faithfulness. If you are not faithful in preaching the word, you are preaching, yes, like one of the dreamers. But be faithful in season and out of season. Paul charged Timothy, preach the word in season and out of season. Is it in season at work? Yes, you may say, this is a work season. But the word of God says, even out of season, preach the word. It's time to drive. I'm going to see somebody at the funeral. I'm attending a funeral. Is it in season or out of season? No, it's in season for a funeral, but not for the word. Even out of season, share a book. Preach the word in season and out of season. What does God say? He says, what is the chaff to the wheat? What is a dream compared to my word? Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, let them dream, let them be followed, let them do whatever they want to do. That is chaff, but when wheat, but when wheat is tasted, it tastes sweeter than chaff. And those who have been following the dreams will come back when God says, come out of here, my people. The Bible says here, says the Lord. It's not me speaking. It's not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Give them the word. Why should we give them the word? Ellen White says, there are many who are crying out for the living God, longing for the divine presence. Philosophical theories or literary essays, however brilliant, cannot satisfy the heart. The assertions and inventions of men are not of value. Let the word of God speak to the people. Give 
them the word. In season and out of season. Let those who have heard only traditions and human theories and maxims hear the voice of him whose word can renew the soul unto everlasting life. Preach the word. That's my charge to you this morning, rather this afternoon. Preach the word. Why? People are running after wealth. Allow me to say to you, even the most wealthy in this world have committed suicide. I'll cite only three rich people in this world. Jonathan Reth, at the age of 35, he was worth 46 million British pounds. But in 2009, young and vibrant, thinking that he has a, a lot of orange future ahead of himself, he decided to take a gun, leaving the millions behind, and shot himself. Ellie Black bribed a Honduras a president. He bribed him by 2.5 million. That is 2.5 million US dollars. The question is, how much did he have? Far much more than that. But with all the money that he had, money without manners is useless. Cake without character is useless. The story goes on to say that this man, Ellie Black, had built a 44-story building. And he went up to the 44th floor and he leaped from there to his death. Leaving the story behind. Leaving the monies behind. No satisfaction at all. Why? Because he was not given the word. We see them driving Porsche cars, flashy and big and what have you, and they have beautiful air conditioners. The air conditioners reach the outside, but not the heart. Give them the word, whether poor or rich, give them the word. They need Jesus for them to be blessed and truly blessed. God is the only blesser I know. That can bless you indeed. The last one, Christopher Foster, at the age of 50. I'm not sure, I think I left the information as to how many millions he had at the time. But he was uh, from Britain also. At the age of 50, he shot his wife in their posh house. Special suburb. And after shooting his wife, he shot his daughter. Swimming in millions. Swimming pool was there. Not only of water, but of money as well. Filthy rich, shot his daughter, and he decided to start the fire and burnt the house. And he decided, I was, I'm going to stay here, inhale all the smoke until I die. That's the pain people are going through when we don't give them the word. That's why Jesus said, and this is eternal life. Amen. That they may know you, the only true God. This says to me, there are other gods that are not true. And you and me claim to worship the true God. Let them know the true God by giving them the word. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Is there someone this morning who says, Lord, I don't care about riches. I don't care about fashion. I don't care about the suburbs. They may be in suburbs protected from the thieves, but eaten by the cancer of sin. Break through in there and give Houghton the word. Are you here this morning and you say, Lord, I may not know how, I may not be able to do it myself, but I understand that you are a God who equips us. And I want to give them the word. If that's your desire this morning, put up your hand. And you just want to give them the word. Nothing else but the word. I want to invite Pastor Mkwanazi this morning. I say, these hands are lifted up to come and pray for us. Pastor Mkwanazi. Come up. As he is coming, there on the board you have a, a commitment form. Some of you already have it in your hands.
out there, make use of that form and give it to a conference for the books and the tracks that you want. What is 140 rand compared to a soul? If Christ left the splendors of heaven and his love is produced in your life, what is 140 rand? What is three rand? I want to say to you, give them the word in season and out of season. Let those hands remain up. Let them be tired for souls. They indicate the souls that will be saved in the kingdom. Pastor Mkwanazi, this is your time. Shall we stand as we pray? Our kind and loving Father, our gracious God, we want to honor you and give glory to your name. For you have never spoken for no reason. You have never called people together without giving them a mandate. I want to thank you, dear loving Father, for giving us a mandate anew. To stand up and do our part in the work that was solely reserved for heavenly beings. But because of your love and your grace, for sinners like us, you have invited us to be part. Oh Lord, we want to admit that we have failed you in many ways. And that is why at this point in time, Lord, we are praying that you work in us anew. Touch what must be touched and remove what must be removed so that your work through us may prosper. There are many millions, Lord, that are crying out to heaven. And the question is, who shall go? Who is ready to be sent? And like the old prophet, Lord, we are saying, here we are. Send us. Don't only send us, Lord, but send also our resources. Use everything that is within our means so that your work may prosper in this part of the region. There are many, Lord, millions that are occupying Gauteng. Our prayers, Lord, are that since you have opened the veil, that Gauteng must be counted also. May you work miracles through useless things like us, foolish things, weakest things, so that when we look back one day, and we see what you will have accomplished through us. We may come humbled before the throne of grace and say thank you for using us to lead others to knowing you. Bless Elder Mwesi like never before. As he speaks through your word, inciting each and every one of us, Lord, our prayers are that one day when you shall gather us together, when the dead in Christ shall be resurrected, and those that have agreed to follow you be changed, when we shall be called together, may he also with his family be there. It's our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.